Welcome to our overview of Delta Cobra, the advanced project control software tool that unlocks the potential of your projects. In this instruction video, we will explore key aspects of Cobra, illustrating how it streamlines project management, promotes data integration, and maximizes project success. Cobra will help facilitate better cooperation between cost, schedule, and technical, meaning the three functions will have to talk to each other to effectively use Cobra. This will help increase everyone's understanding of the roles each performs in the program's overall success. Dell Tech Cobra is designed to ensure your project stays on course and on budget, delivering unrivaled efficiency, accuracy, and predictive insights throughout the life cycle of your program. One fundamental aspect of Dell Tech Cobra is its use of calendar files. These files define working hours, non-working days, and any time-related project parameters. Ensuring your calendar is set up correctly will allow accurate reporting. Let me show you what Cobra looks like and go over some of its main features. When you open Cobra, you'll see this main screen. It'll always open to the screen, and the projects that you see are the ones that you'll have access to. If you don't have access to a project, you will not see it on this screen. On the left-hand side are calendars, codes, rates, resources, all reports, personal reports, and batch reports, and I'll get into each one of those soon. If we open up a project, you'll see this screen with four different quadrants in it. The first project of the projects tab, or the top left, provides you a control account work package view, or however the project is set up in a spreadsheet pane. If you click on the pluses, and then click on the plus again, this brings it down to your lower level. So we start at the control account, which is a concatenation of your control account fields 1, 2, and 3, and for this project, it's WBS, OBS, and control account, and then down to the work package level, and then one more level down to the resource, which is the lowest level. If we scroll over, we can see the different classes for each of those resources. Here, we have actual, budget, earned, and forecast. The second quadrant in the top right, or the time phase resource detail summary, shows your resource broken out into time phase months, or periods, depending how your calendar is set up. You can change the results by clicking right here, and if you'd like to see hours, we can choose hours, and it changes this data in the top right to the hours. If we'd like to see it at direct, we click on the direct and it changes it to direct. The third quadrant is the control account work package detail quadrant. This shows the detail of either the control account or work package depending on what you're clicked on. At this level, it shows the control account data. One level lower in the work package, it adds all your work package data. This quadrant shows baseline start and finish dates, actual start and finish dates, as well as many others as you can see here. It also provides the progress technique for the work package. If the work package progress technique has milestones or step, you'll see those listed here. Any codes for the work package or control account will also be listed here. And then notes for the work package or control account. Anyone that has access to your project will be able to see those notes. The fourth quadrant shows the time phase details for a specific resource, from the input level, hours or direct, down to each individual burden, such as overhead, GNA. This will show the full cost buildup. The quadrant only shows data when a resource is selected in the spreadsheet quadrant. If a control account or work package is selected, this quadrant will be blank. Calendars, codes, rates, and resources are all referred to as ancillary files in COBRA. Ancillary files are COBRA objects that form the foundation of the COBRA project. A COBRA project cannot be set up until ancillary files are created. These files include a project's calendar, codes, which include WBS, OBS, CLIN, CAM, rates, and resources. All files can be linked to multiple projects, but is recommended each project have its own calendar. We can navigate through each one of these. When I click on calendars, these are the calendars I have access to. These are the codes that the quadcopter project uses. OBS, BCR, Control Account, Control Account Manager, CLIN, OBS, WBS, and Work Package. When a project is baselined, it's assigned a rate file. As the forward pricing rates, or rates, get updated, a new rate file is created. The rate file is built with a list of named forward pricing rates, direct labor rates, and overhead rates used to build a cost baseline. This file is the basis for the resource cost buildup. The first ancillary file to build is the fiscal calendar. It's important to align the calendar with your organization's financial reporting periods. It's also used to define the productive hours defined by the organization to produce full-time equivalent calculations. While the calendar can be used across multiple projects, it is not recommended, and a new calendar file should be created for each individual project. After the calendar is created, the rate file is the next ancillary file to be created because each of these resources uses the calendar periods 
for any rate escalations. After the calendar is created and the rates are created, the next step of the ancillary files are the resources. The resource file has two main components, the basic resource structure and resource cost calculation, which is the cost buildup from hours through total burden cost. The resource file can be a flat structure or can be built using a typical breakdown structure. Here, we break down labor and non-labor. And if I click on the Agile Software Engineering, and if I click on Business Management, you can see my calculations down below. We go from hours to FTE, direct, overhead, and GNA. Each result builds upon the one above it. For example, FTE takes the hours as its source result, and it multiplies hours times the FTE rate set. Direct takes the hours and multiply it by the business management rate set. And then overhead is the overhead rate times direct, while GNA is direct plus overhead, as you can see here, we've selected both of those, times the GNA rate. The fiscal calendar is used as the basis for every report that is generated from the COBRA system. There are three standard calendar sets that come as a default. This is calendar set 00. This set defines all of the fiscal periods in the calendar and is typically used to run the time phase reports such as control account plans. Calendar set 18. This set defines the periods used to generate IPMR formats 1, 2, and 5. This set flags the previous period, the to date, and at the bottom are at complete. Calendar set 19. This set defines the periods used to generate IPMR formats 3 and 4. As you can see here, our first six periods are labeled as months with the star or the floating flag, and every period after that is by quarter with the dollar sign or the fixed flag. To create a more complete calendar and better represent working hours per period, adding holidays is essential. Here I'm adding the holidays already established in an Excel file. I'm going to import the holidays into our COBRA project. This holiday is in July of 2016, which has 168 hours. When we calculate the hours, COBRA decreases the hours per month based on the holiday. The labels are used to define what style of dates or period labels appear on the columns or headers or reports. This text field can be changed to suit however the users like to see it. This data can be exported and imported to make mass changes. The previous and two date labels must be present on calendar set 18. They are used to define the current period and how COBRA sums up the cumulative information in formats 1, 2, and 5. The at complete label defines the completion date of the project is used to sum up all of the prior periods for project totals. On calendar set 19, the star or floating flag defines the periods that will advance to the next labeled period when the calendar is advanced. The dollar sign or fixed flag defines fixed periods that do not change as the calendar is advanced each month. For example, when the calendar is advanced, the previous two date and all months with the star will move down one period, while the fixed flags will not move at all. When creating a calendar in COBRA, it's important to line the calendar with your organizational financial reporting calendar. There are two ways to create a calendar in COBRA. Both ways start with utilizing the calendar wizard and using the options. The first method is to use the dates provided through the wizard. The second is to import the dates and hours that reconcile to the business's accounting calendar. This training uses the dates provided through the wizard. To create a new calendar file, we're going to choose New Calendar File. We'll name this calendar file and give it a description. It's important to remember not to name the calendar file the same as any other file.
In the periods dialog, select the end month button in the period in it. In the periods dialog, we're going to select the end of month period interval. This will end our fiscal period at the end of every calendar month. Always start the calendar at least two periods prior to the start of the project and push the end date of the calendar beyond the period performance end date by several periods to provide buffer for extensions in the project. This also allows this calendar to be used as a template for other project calendars. In the Productive Hours dialog, enter the standard productive hours for each day of the week. Typically, it's going to be 8 hours a day. However, if your organization defines productive time as something other than 8 hours, enter that value. This will allow COBRA to calculate the hours per month based on the number of working days in that period. Next, we can choose how we want to label our periods. There's lots of different choices here. I'm going to choose this one. The Access Control dialog box is where you would allow other users to access to the calendar. You can add users, groups, or roles here. When you click on Finish, your new calendar is created. Based off of the data that we provided, you can see the end of the month for each month is the end of the period. Our labels are how we chose the labels that we wanted. FTE calculations, labor spreads, and Cedral submittals. They play a crucial role in accurately analyzing project performance. By setting up calendar files tailored to your organization's working schedule and in your customers' requirements, you can ensure precise calculations of cost, earn value, and resource planning, thus enhancing the accuracy of project data and results. In the realm of Delta Cobra, code files serve as the building blocks of a project. These codes represent various elements, such as work breakdown structure, activities, resources, and cost categories. Code files help establish a hierarchical structure for your projects, allowing you to officially measure project elements and their associated costs. With a well-organized coding system, tracking and reporting become more streamlined, enabling a clearer understanding of project progress. Code files are the building blocks of every project. The first step in building an EV program in COBRA is to set up the work breakdown structure. Each program will have different code files. The code file each program uses will depend on how the COBRA program is set up and its reporting requirements. The WBS code file is set up with a hierarchical structure. Our code structure goes from 1 to 1.1, 1, 1, and then we can even go further into 1.1.3.1, 1.1.3.2, 1, and 1, 1.1.3.2.1. 1. Each program, each project will be set up according to the structure of how the customer requests. This structure allows reporting to be rolled up from the lowest level of 1.1.3.2.1 to 1132, 113, 11, and then to the top level of 1. It's not just the WBS that could be set up in a hierarchical structure. The OBS can as well. Here we have it broken out into lower structures as well. So you can roll up from the lower level right to the higher level OBS. Lastly, I'd like to demonstrate how Delta Cobra empowers you to leverage data from various external sources seamlessly. This capability enables you to consolidate data from scheduling tools, financial systems, and other project management applications into a unified platform. For this demonstration, we'll be using Microsoft Project and a tool called the ClearPlan Toolbar to export the data from the IMS into CSV files for upload into Cobra. Having the data come directly from the IMS will help ensure cost schedule integration. By integrating data from outside sources, you gain a comprehensive view of your project's financial health, earn value metrics, and resource utilization. This real-time integration enhances decision-making, risk assessment, and resource allocation, ultimately driving project success. Cobra allows integration through OpenPlan, Microsoft Project, Primavera, or through a file such as a CSV or an Excel file. In this example, I'm going to pull in a baseline from two CSV files. I'll ensure to choose our control account or work package, which is our activity file, our code assignments and user fields, which are additional code files that are assigned to each work package or control account, such as CAM, and then our resource file. I'll choose my activity file. And I'll choose my resource file. Select our project, then 
The file that we're using was created with the clear plan toolbar. It already has the te progress technique in the file. We're going to load our budget into our default class. On the change control dialog, accept the defaults of the boxes, but change the dropdown to key field one structure, then schedule activities. Changing the get the control attached descriptions to key field one structure, then schedule activities will allow Cobra to keep the structure and the naming that is in Cobra rather than using the import file. On the filter dialog, we're pulling in our total project. You can also select control account or work package if you only want to pull in a lower subset of data. No change to the other option screen as the load resource codes as non-significant is only applicable when you have a punctuated significant breakdown structure for the resource file, which we don't. For the save and load, we can save our configuration if we think we're going to be doing multiple baseline loads. When I click finish, our baseline import will begin. As you can see, the baseline is now loaded into the project. The benefits of using the integration is that your data should reconcile directly from the import file. In conclusion, Delta Cobra revolutionizes project management by providing calendar files for precision, code files for structured organization, and seamless integration of external data for comprehensive insights. Ready to take your project to the next level? Contact our team today to explore how Delta Cobra can transform your project management experience and drive success in every endeavor.